Hi, I'm Bob Vila. Welcome to our project in Punta Gorda, Florida. We are building an all-concrete house, and today we're putting the finishing touches on some of the formwork, and we're also getting ready to pour about four truckloads of concrete. We'll also visit with Wayne Saladay, who's the Charlotte County Emergency Manager, to learn a little bit more about how devastating Charlie was, and we'll meet our homeowners. Stick around. Looking at our aluminum formwork that's almost done, Cameron Parker is the production manager for SolidWall Systems. And Cameron, tell us a little bit about, just to recap, how this has come together. Uh, we spent, uh, today we're taking and uh, erecting this. It takes about a uh, five hours, just eight hour time frame, depending on the size of the house. Putting them all together. Yes, sir. With a, about a six man crew. With right? about a six man crew. Okay. Uh, we've got, uh, this is a typical uh, form that we use. Uh -huh. We uh, spray it down with a biodegradable form oil before we install it to allow the concrete not to adhere so we can release it once we take the forms off. Right, and then the forms are clipped together as we see here? Yes, yeah, so the forms are clipped together with a wedge and a pin. Yep. And then the, there's a wall tie that's installed to hold the two forms outside and inside together. And you've also got clips down yes, on, sir. on the slab? Absolutely. And then we've got, what's this going in here? This is a window buck. So what this is, is once the, the concrete is poured around this buck, we remove the buck, the window can be directly installed in this opening sure. without any extra so this is additional work. A specialized part of the formwork. Yes, it is. That conforms to the rough opening for the window that's yes, going there. Yes, it does. There. Yes, it does. It eliminates the the need for additional lumber or material to keep from uh, yeah. leaking or uh, have problems with water. There's barely intrusion. any lumber used here at all, right? Absolutely. Great. And then this clip gets. They're installing wall ties right now. That's what holds up the window buck as well as holds the form, the inside and outside form together. So okay. as we pour, they don't come so apart. So when we start pouring later on from the top, it'll just basically go down and fill in the area underneath it. Yes. And when we strip, we end up with all our window openings in place. Correct, correct. All right, thanks, Cameron. You're We're welcome. going to be pouring a little bit later in the show, but right now I thought it would be wise to recap how we got this far. Summertime weather in southwest Florida often means afternoon showers, but this time around here in Punta Gorda, we've had seven days of uninterrupted downpours, which have finally just abated, and today we are pouring our concrete slab. Now, much of the preliminary work that's had to take place here involved bringing in truckloads of fill so that we could get up to an elevation that meets current requirements. Uh, and putting in a new slab for the house is not as easy as it once was because requirements now uh, dictate that you build a stem wall around the whole perimeter of the house. This means that you're going down about three courses of concrete blocks so that you create a barrier to storm surge waters, preventing them from getting in underneath a slab and creating the hydrostatic pressure which could move the slab and in fact destroy the house. Now, all the concrete that was poured in here which took about three to four hours to get in place, was delivered via a big pumping rig, the big Johnson over here. And uh, this makes it very easy to move the concrete around the whole footprint of the house to uh, minimize the amount of labor involved. Now, the important thing to keep in mind is that the reinforcing is very, very, very important to the strength of the slab. And so we have to make sure that they're lifting it so that it floats in the middle of the slab. And uh, once all of this pouring has been done, the finishing begins. We use, obviously, uh, bow floats and motorized floats, and we go through stages of finishing and polishing the concrete. The solid wall system itself requires the construction of an elaborate web of steel reinforcing rods, vertical rebar, usually number fives, horizontal pieces for heading off window openings, and then all of it is covered in a steel mesh what looks like a steel mesh reinforcing. Uh, all of this took basically about four or five hours to get accomplished. We're gonna chat now with Wayne Saladay, a Charlotte County Emergency Manager, who talk a little bit about some of the effects of this storm on not just Florida in general, but on the community here. We're standing right in front of something that nine months later is still largely destroyed, and now I learned it's condemned. 
Tell us a little bit about the impact of this storm. Well, one of our big problems, Bob, as we go into another hurricane season is we've got hundreds and hundreds of properties that look just like this one. Yeah. We've got homes that look the day they did after Hurricane Charlie, and that's a real, real concern because recovery is not something that happens instantaneously. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes a lot of effort to get these buildings down and, and, and to begin the process of rebuilding our community. Right. And should another storm threaten, uh, we've got some very serious issues uh, to deal with in terms of flying debris. Now, is the problem mostly just that the numbers are so huge, there's been so many damaged buildings, there aren't enough contractors to exactly. go around? There just aren't enough demolition companies mm -hmm. to do it. I mean, demolition is a tedious process. It yep. has to be done right. You yep. don't just come in and clear a site. It's got to be done. It's got to be done safely. There's OSHA rules and regulations. And uh, getting uh, contractors that are skilled and do that for a living, and again, there just aren't that many to go around. And they're spread pretty th uh, thin across the state of Florida. Sure. You got them in Pensacola, you got them here, right. and uh, so it's it's a big problem. Now, were there some homes that were more susceptible to destruction in this hurricane than Absolutely. others? Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, anything, pretty much, uh, you could write off those that went through the eye wall of Charlie that were built in the 60s, 70s, early 80s, mm -hmm. uh, were going to have damage, particularly so roof failures. This example is Absolutely. probably from that period, this maybe in the 70s. Very good example of pre uh, Florida Unified Building Code uh -huh. um, and a place that was built with materials and, and wood frame construction uh, with lap siding and, and just really didn't stand a chance. And you can see where the damage is on this particular building that the winds did come around from the east and southeast as right. Charlie passed over right. and did its damage on this side of the building. Right. And uh, so it's, it's unfortunate that you see properties like this and people have to understand the 50-50 rule that's out there. That if a property is damaged beyond the 50% level, right. it has to be replaced. It's a teardown. And, and it's yeah. a teardown. And, and in some cases, zoning changes affect what can be rebuilt. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, yeah. and, and that gets into the whole insurance issue and right. having law and ordinance coverage right. on your property that protects you when the rules and regulations change yep. so that you can build a similar type of structure uh, for the amount of money that you might have available. So, right. yeah, you get people that are caught in, uh, you know, have a real catch-22 right. when you have a situation like, like this one in particular. Now, other homes like this lovely lavender house over here seem to have gotten through the storm pretty much unscathed. Well, imagine. Now, these people, a couple reasons. One, obviously, point number one, this house has a hip roof. Yeah. Gable roofs just don't make it, especially when they're facing the wind. Mm -hmm. uh, that gable is, is going to fail the gable without like bracing. Yeah. The gable end is like a sail. But the hip roof provides deflection of the wind, yeah. and, and that's key point number one. Number yeah. two, they had window protection on this house. Right. Paramount to protecting a Florida home. Mm -hmm. Keep the wind out of the doors and windows, and right. you're not going to get those uplift pressures, and your house stands a, a significant chance of surviving. And surprisingly, many houses, like the cottages across the way, which come, you know, go back to the 20s or the 30s, are still intact. Isn't it amazing to take a look at old Florida construction and, and realize that we have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of homes just like these throughout the Punta Gorda community that mm -hmm. did just as well. Mm -hmm. it, it's uh, when I first got out into the community, in fact, the, the day after the storm when we flew over the city, mm -hmm. and I was able to look down, and I mean, these streets have been my home for 40 years, right. and I looked at some of these houses and I said, you got to be kidding me. I yeah. can't believe that that's still there. Yeah. When I saw buildings all around that had failed miserably under the, the wind forces. I and think of them as baskets. They, they, they're flexible, they give in the wind, but they, they stay there. Wayne, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks, Bob. All right. Pleasure. The concrete trucks should roll in just any minute, but before they do and before we start pouring, let's say hi to Jim Crane, who's with Precise Forms, a company that developed this system. How old is this? Uh, we started manufacturing this in March of 1967. Interesting. So they've been around for a while. A long while. Have they also been used for underground purposes, for foundations? Yeah, that was the initial use in the beginning, was uh, subterranean basements, foundations, that sort of application. I see. And when did they start going above ground? About five years ago, we hooked up with uh, Mercedes Homes mm -hmm. here in Central Florida and started uh, pouring a lot of their homes above grade. Okay. We had done some previous to that, but it was more scattered. Once we got involved with Mercedes, it became uh, a real production issue at that point. And is it primarily something that's uh, becoming popular in the Sun Belt? Right. It's taking off more in the state of Florida than anywhere. There's more motivation locally, if you will, because of the inclement weather that they experience down right. here for so, uh, a more secure home. Yeah, it's perceived as being a much more sturdy Absolutely. way of building a house. Absolutely. What's the growth been like for your company? We've experienced over the last five years, for example, about 30% a year. 
30% a year. Yes. So that goes on to imply the number of new houses being built with this kind of system is uh, enormous. Right. I heard that the average, uh, well, the average home like this, the set of forms itself is worth about $150,000. Does that make sense? Actually, this set here is probably closer to 125,000. 125. Okay. That would but, include the form baskets and everything. Yeah, and you're going to get a lot of use out of them. Okay, so we're just a few minutes away from pouring, and I got to admit, this really looks like a container. Like something should be on one of those container ships right now. Yes, sir, it does. Yeah, but let's go through the layout. Okay. You just come in the entrance here. What's on the right? What we got is the master area over here, sir. When we walk in through here, we've got the dining and living room area. No windows at all. Um, there is some windows. They're encapsulated. The window bucks are being put into the sides. When we strip them, you'll be able to see the windows. Okay, so this is master bedroom and bathroom, and you'll have a big window over there. Big window. And a big slider over there. Uh, correct. And then this area? This is the uh, dining living area. Over to the left over here is the kitchen. We've got the breakfast nook area. Oh, that's nice, yeah. Along the corner over here, we have the nice big family area where we have two big windows inside of that wall that look out onto the canal. So we do have a view window there. Yes, we That's do. Good. We have th two three six windows over there. Then we've got one, two, three bedrooms over here and a laundry room. Excellent. So we've got three bedrooms and a bath. And a laundry room. A laundry room and then a two-car garage. And we Correct. got Mark over here. Hey, Mark. This is hey, an Mark. exciting minute. Yes, it is. Now, the concrete that gets poured What's the PSI? What's what is it anything special about the concrete? It's a small aggregate, three thousand pounds. Uh-huh. And, uh, and you don't have to put any kind of extra ingredients in it. Just add water. Just add water. Okay. All right, so do you have to worry about the, all this concrete sticking or you know actually, setting up or actually the the uh, forms have been oiled where the concrete won't stick to it. Mm -hmm. Uh set up. It normally takes after, well, once we get done pumping, it takes four to six hours, depends on the weather, mm -hmm. as to whether the concrete's set up or not. Right. That's just a, a test. Right. We will also vibrate around windows and door openings to make sure that we get full coverage around the door. So that you don't end up with any kind of honeycombing effect. Honeycombing or blowout or anything like that. Right. Now, a blowout, I would think, would be an extremely horrible thing to happen in here if, if one of these fasteners lets go. Right, right. That, what I was just referring to as a blowout, when you take the forms away from the wall, oh. the concrete blows out with it, yes. which means either stuck to the form or you didn't get good uh, conformity. Yes, I understand. Now, I notice they've set up a whole row of two-by-fours along the perimeter up at the top. What's that do? Right, that uh, two-by-fours with the waiter bracket, those little brackets are called, they help hold the wall square. Mm -hmm. You've got like 36-inch panels, 24-inch panels. The two-by-fours are usually 16 to 20 feet long. That adds strength to the wall, so as your static load comes in from the concrete, you don't have any tweaking of the panel. So there's no, even a minor variation like that can make for a messy, messy look. Yes. Okay. Yeah, great. All right, it's day two now. Four continued until after eight o'clock last night. And, you know, overnight is all it takes. We're now in the process of stripping away the form work. And we can see what's happening right over here. Hi, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Mark, Jesse. Um, it's only been approximately 12 hours since right. we poured it. And so it's still relatively green. Green. Yeah. But it's okay to take all these yes, it is. forms off. Set up time is normally it would make sure you use anywhere from six to eight hours. That's all you need. And the, here's one of our window, what, window box. box. Right, the window box. Um, I think he's a little bit scared that the thing is going to break at the corner. Now so. yeah, the next ride should be perfect. Perfect. Look at that blue Florida sky. The uh, the location here is. The master bedroom, right. and look at how those clips just uh, break right off. Yeah, yeah. That's what made you do that. Now the the vertical clips that we see at the top of the wall. Uh, tell me about those, Jesse. Uh, those are the truss straps. They're the Simpson Strong Tie truss straps. And they were installed at the end of the pour last night. Correct. What's the spacing? Um, depending on the truss layout. Okay. But they basically tie around the the correct the bottom member of the truss. Correct. Now, is that something that is new in terms of hurricane re code requirements? Um, no, they've just up, up the codes, though, but uh, they've always been in place. They've always been required. 
Good. How long is it going to take to strip the hole? Normally, uh, six to eight hours. All right, so we'll be watching. Yeah. Boy, that one really came out real clean, didn't it? Yes, it did. Okay, now we've got two, three sections of the wall that are exposed here. Let's let's look at this section over here, and talk a little bit about the condition. Um, it's so wet to the touch, and there are just little tiny areas where you got you know little imperfections mm -hmm. like that. What what do you have to do next? What we'll do is we'll come through and put a skim coat of concrete mm -hmm. to fill all the voids, such as this where the wall tire was. But the skim coat just in little areas where right. ties were and right. the like. But this right here, what do you do? To, anything else? No, the other the thing we do is put elastomeric uh, water uh, intrusion substance. The outside will be painted on. The inside is knife grade, pretty much where the wall ties were. Uh -huh. So we have no water intrusion. OK. And then from the point of view of finishes, uh, come on up here and look at this. I mean, we're not going to just trowel uh, plaster right around there, are we? No, sir. What we do here is this is a we'll have a uh, three-step process here. Actually, what we do is we come in and we pressure wash to get some of the oil residue off from the form boards. Mm -hmm. And then what we come in is but we there's act. hardly any, uh, Jesse. I mean, it yes, doesn't we feel at do all oily. We do it for a safety precaution and, okay. and for bonding. Yeah. And um, what we do here is we come in, pressure wash, and then we acrobond in front of our scratch coat. Acrobond. Acrobond. It's a bonding agent. Okay, a catalyst. And, and then we put in our um, first coat, which is our scratch coat. Uh huh. And then we come back over that once it greens up a little bit, and we put a second coat, which is called a brown coat. And then once that hardens up, then we come back and we put our final coat on. Okay. And so it's it's basically going to have the look of a traditional Florida plaster Correct. job. Right. And what about the forms there, Mark? Um, I mean, be, when you use them on the next job tomorrow or whatever, do they have to be scraped or sanded or well, cleaned what up? What happens when they come off is they will scrape it and re-oil it before it goes into the basket. Window bucks, all aluminum pieces will be re-oiled. They get oiled when they come off, and they get oiled when they go right before they go on. So and we have the, very little sticking of the concrete. And it's not uh, petroleum or diesel or anything like no, that. Somebody no. said it was a biodegradable. Yes, it is. Okay, so anything that spills over and stuff is not harmful to, to the, the work site. That's, correct. that's great. All right, let's talk a little bit about the timing involved here. Um, before you go to this finish stage, do you have to wait and let it cure for a week or two weeks or um, what? This house will probably sit a couple weeks before we actually go into our process. Okay. All right, guys. Well, before we wrap things up here, I want to say hi to the homeowner. I'm over here, Bob. Hey, Jim. Well, hi. what do you think? I mean, this is pretty lightning fast stuff that's going on here. Yeah, isn't it incredible? Incredible. We had, like, two days ago, nothing but sand. And now it seems like I just woke up and here's a... A house that's practically built. Yeah, I know. It is as, 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 as close to dream house building as it gets, I suppose. It is. Now, yeah. have, you, have you figured out the layout? Where are you? We're, we're in the master bathroom, and this is where our tub is going to be. So you got a window right over the tub. Window right over a big tub. But, of course, a lot of these new windows have tinting in them and stuff, so the privacy yeah, is not much of an issue. Secure. Now, tell me about, you know, you kind of, you and your wife worked on designing this house with Mercedes Homes and stuff. We did. And now you've got an actual opportunity to walk through it. Does it feel right? Oh, it seems so much better. We, all we saw was prints and on, on paper for just weeks. Sure. But now it's manifested as a house. Yeah, it's exactly. Incredible. It's even it's more incredible exactly. than I when thought it, it, it would it, be. Concrete, to use the right term. Concrete. Congratulations. Thanks, okay. Bob. We're running out of time. Next time, we're going to be working on sheathing, hot mopping, and tiling the roof. Till then, I'm Bob Vila.